Welcome to the Artist Village in downtown Santa Ana. The SoCal Safari crew visited during one of the first Saturday art walks, which also coincided with the opening of a series of events happening inside the Grand Central Art Center. A variety of talented artists and vendors set up shop and create a fun and eclectic interactive experience and makes for a great date night too. All right, everybody, give me your name, my dear. Just Slane. And you? Armin. I'm Scott. I'm Kevin. All right, you passed the test. Good job. <laughs> you all know your own names. Now, we're standing here in front of your exhibit here, or what, is that the right word in term? So. Exhibit? It's, uh, yeah, it's just a collaboration. Basically, it's a theremin list theremin. Okay. And uh, Scott worked on the sculptural part. Kevin did the eye programming. You can see it's got eyeballs back there. Okay. Uh, G did the user interface part in the front, the cauldron right there. Nice. And uh, I did the audio and graphics. Okay, wow, okay. So whose idea was this to come forward and make this whole creation? Uh, I built the, the tree for uh, a live gaming event and mm -hmm. Uh, it felt like a waste to build it for one event, so uh, we had this idea with Soundwave coming up. This was a, a really unique sculpture, and why don't we make it interactive? <laughs> the Art Walk is a fun place to shop and try your hand at some interactive displays, which is the perfect place for performance artist Lucas Mergida. When we first got here, you were setting stuff up and we were filming and you were up on a ladder and you were, I mean, you're all over the place. But yet here you are wearing this beautiful suit. Thank you. And I love it. Uh, and that's kind of your thing, the suit, right? Uh, yeah, I try to, when I perform, I worn different uniforms over the years, mostly as a way to just formalize the process. Uh, when people see someone either dressed in a uniform or in a suit, they respond in a different way. Sure. And I, yeah. using those tropes, I can get people to engage and do things that they might not normally do. Uh, okay. uh, a friend of yours I met up with here uh, earlier today said that you had actually, you created or built a phone booth. Uh, it was sort of, sort of an eight hour project and you did the whole thing yep. uh, wearing a lovely suit. Was it the same suit that you're wearing here? No, that suit no, got destroyed in that piece. <laughs> so the, I've had a lot over the years. For many years, I've used my job as research to make artwork about. about. Uh, when I was a kid, I worked in uh, cabinet factories making furniture. Right. I worked in fine dining as a busboy for a long time. I taught yoga for a number of years. Oh, wow. But probably the work that I'm most known for is I worked as a professional locksmith for 10 years. Oh. And the artwork that comes as a result of the research is always different. But for the locksmithing stuff, I made a school. And the school would travel to different public places. And I teach anybody interested in something specifically or very loosely related to locksmithing. What we're doing tonight is uh, if people want to participate, they can give me a key that they want to let go of that they don't need anymore, they don't want anymore. Um, I melt it down in the furnace, I then pour it into a mold, make a new key, and it's very organic, one-of-a-kind sort of object. Mm -hmm. And then after I'm done with the key, it will open up that door. And uh, if they want to go inside, they can, but they get locked in and they have to figure out how to get out. Um, the locks that I create are more conceptual based. I like to present situations that are always unlocked. You just can't see why they're unlocked. And a lot of locksmithing you deal with uh, the American Disabilities Act, which is a set of coding and laws that dictates every aspect of how we move through our kind of shared social spaces. And a lot of that is about the heights of doorknobs or the way that doorknobs functions or door closers or that, this sort of stuff. So a person with a disability will encounter a situation like that every day where, there's, where their body's mobility inhibits what they can do. Right. So this gives people an opportunity to feel what that feels like every day for a lot of people. about some of the other unique things that you've done as far as uh, because it's all across the board yeah I've done a lot of different stuff probably the work that I'm most known for is a project where um, I, I built a cabinet and it had a, a secret compartment on the bottom of it and uh, I, I was left on a street in New York City and I, I didn't come out of the cabinet until someone brought me from a public space and brought me into a private space but they didn't know I was in there oh. so that's <laughs> that's probably the one a lot of my work is about shared power dynamics, whether for most people would look at my position as very vulnerable and exposed, but I was still in control because they didn't know I was in there and they didn't know what my intentions were. There's a risk. <laughs> but, ri is. but risk 
creates immediacy in the viewer and it creates an engagement that wouldn't normally be there. Well, here we are with the man that uh, is kind of the glue that holds all of this together here, John Spiak, and you are the chief curator, director of Grand Central Arts Center, basically, right? That's correct, yes. And what a great uh, night you put together here with some of the exhibits. Uh, first of all, Lucas and the uh, Melting Key, that was fun. Lucas is incredible. Did you yeah. bring him in, or how did he We brought him in. He's been an artist in residence now with us for six months. Uh, he came down from San Francisco. We saw some of his locksmithing work and we just thought this is an incredible artist and he would really engage well here. We realized the creative process is not a linear process a lot of times and with the restraints put on it, it doesn't always work. So the way our residency program works is we invite artists and residents to come do a first side visit and make sure it's okay with the living situation and our staff. And then once we've decided they're an artist in residence, we help support them financially. Uh, but we don't want a project. We want them to come and explore this area, to think about uh, different things that they might create, and we just listen. And as they start talking about things, we say, oh, well, you should meet this person, you should connect with this institution, you should see this place. So it's not, oh, come here for three months and we need a concrete outcome. Mm -hmm. It's come here until the project is realized. And sometimes that's three months, sometimes that's six years. Uh, we we've, we've try to really flow with the artist and, and follow what the creative process should be.